This is really a comfortable boat. So Randy, this is pretty neat here. This is beautiful, the way this all works out like this, the storage. Look at the size of this cockpit, huh? Fabulous. Be prepared to be dazzled. Is that cool or what? We have a lot of boat here, don't we? Now, wait till you take a look at this. Hi there, this is Captain Koo and my old sailing buddy, Randy. Join us as we travel hither and yon as we look for some great deals on classic boats and learn a little with each one. CC dog. Oh, there we go. Hey, Randy. Hey. Come on over here. Check this out. Whoa. You got something special this week. Well, no, I'm afraid we're not going to look at this boat this week. This is a, uh, a replica, and I think it's supposed to be pretty exact, of the vessel Joshua Slocum sailed around the world solo in, a first for all mankind. This is a gorgeous piece of handiwork, whoever built it and however they did it. I like that spar. Oh, natural. Uh, it's a serious spar, and this is a serious boom out here too, isn't it? Yeah. And uh, she's gaff rigged, huh? Yeah. So, well, this is the way they did it 100 years ago. Let me show you how you can do it today. All right. All right. Yeah, Follow me. Here we have a 1988 Brewer 44. This is uh, the same hull, actually, as the Whitby 42 that we did earlier in the season. Oh. Now, we don't do duplicates of boats, but this really isn't a duplicate. It's just a little different two feet longer. This is 44, the Whitby was 42. How do they add on two feet if it's the same mold? Well, it's, you'll see it in the stern. It's mainly the scoop in the stern. She's in lovely condition, a catch rig. She's got all the gear, radar. She's got some mast steps to get you up halfway up. Just look for uh, 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 coral reefs and so forth. Uh, massive bowsprit here, huh? We like that? Yep. Ooh, a nice bowsprit, yeah. And it has a viewing window in it, if you notice. Viewing window. Oh, in the bowsprit. In the bowsprit, yes. Oh, that's kind of like the one in Rockland. I think it had half a window, right? That's right. Yes, exactly. A couple of good size anchors there. That's what, a Rockna and a fourth, big Danforth there. Yeah. She has a, a cutaway keel back here, and it's uh, pretty long, but you remember on the Whitby 42, it went right back, and then the rudder was attached to the end of the keel, right? Yep. And it had a slight kick up on the bottom of it. Yep. That's what it looked like. Now, the Brewer Bite, so called, is a, he's just taken, here's, here would have been the keel. He's just taken this big chunk out of the middle of it and left less wet, wetted surface and the, the rudder aft on a skeg uh, back here, which allows a little better turning and handling ability and probably a little better sailing ability. So he's improved the underbody on this boat and uh, she'll be a little bit more weatherly and uh, uh, just a little faster too. You've asked me if this is a molded rub strake, and I don't know. It probably is, and actually I think part of the reason this boat will show uh, about having six or seven more inches of beam than the Whitby 42 is because this is molded in. Uh, okay. Okay, so by the time you add this on this side and then on the other side, that's where you get a little extra beam for the boat. It's kind of a freebie. <laughs> and then a little extra length off the back. A little extra length. And we'll take a look at that when we go down and look at the uh, scoop on the back of the boat. Want to take a look aboard? Okay, here we go. I'd like to see it. Okay. Oh, we love the subscribers. Yeah, more subscribers means that we're going to get recommended to more people. And so that helps spread the love and spread the word about old classic boats and what we're doing. So every little bit helps. Thanks again. Mm -hmm. Okay, pal, come on up. Oh, thanks. Yep, this is pretty nice. We're sitting here, by the way, at uh, Kingman Marine in, on uh, Cape Cod on a beautiful early, early spring day. Look at the size of this cockpit, huh? I'm going to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. You could have 14 people, kind of cheek by jowl, so to speak, sitting in this cockpit. This is really a comfortable boat. We like this, the size of this boat on the 42. Cockpit's about the same size, of course. We have a whole set of instrumentation right of, and forward of us on the, uh, over the sliders for the forward companionway. And let me see if I pop that off. There we go. So we have a nice Ray Marine display here for the radar and a GPS. I'm sure it's locked into that as well, uh, a repeater style. And there are repeater instruments below deck. 
uh, all your sail controls can be done right here uh, in the uh, cockpit and easy to move around. See how I get around the wheel? There's plenty of room here to maneuver. Sail control over here. Uh, I'm not certain which, but this is probably your main sheet right here from the size of the line. They don't have a traveler back here because, first of all, it's not easy to have an after companionway in a traveler. It's impossible. So they just have a single iPad here to control the main sheet. Single engine control right here. Uh, this is a little pitted here from salt and so on. And a uh, Sunto compass. Very bright. Big numbers. I like those big numbers. The boat's equipped. It's got all the right winches in the right place. Here is the... Uh, I just lied to you a few minutes ago. <laughs> well, you don't have a traveler. This is the main sheet. Oh, yeah. That's not the main sheet control. This, this particular storage spot here... It seems familiar. It does. Remember, this was an engine room access, wasn't I, it? I do remember you that. You could drop right down in there. And you could do that with this boat, too, but there's a panel that has to be removed right alongside here and take some of this, these dock lines out. Pretty deep. Pretty deep. You can stand up in there. Uh, right here behind the helmsman, he can keep his sodas cold. No locker on the starboard side because I think we're going to find we have a companionway down there. Yeah. We don't have a quarter berth because... I'm curious to see how it compares to the companionway on the Whitby. I bet it's better. About the same? Better? Let's see. Yeah. Let's see. But let's take a look around the deck for it. You want to go forward with yeah, me? Yeah, let's go forward. Okay, we've had a lot of updates on this boat just in the last couple of years. All the standing rigging is brand new, okay, oh, nice. in the last two years, so that, I consider that new. Uh, the location of the standing rigging uh, is a little tricky to maneuver, maneuver around uh, if you're at sea or even at the dock, but you can get past it. Lovely light colored non-skid deck here, as you see. Uh, we've got a deck prism up here. We've seen those, haven't we? What does oh, that yeah. do? Let's a lot of light in. So, Randy, we have a Maxwell capstan right here. Uh, that's electric, and there's electric controls for it. What are the little pivot things for? Uh, these are going to help you to bring it up in the case it fails. Oh, by hand. Okay, by hand. Okay. Forward to that, we have some pretty heavy-duty bollards right here that you can lash almost any size line on, and that's really good. And they are really bolted down through the deck with some massive, looks like half-inch stainless bolts. Now, your bowsprit... It's a little lacking. I don't know, what is it with the bow spits on these boats? The, <laughs> I think you might have hit it, that they uh, probably bury the nose and blow the, uh, the, blow the, the uh, decking out. out of it. We've got uh, another double luft uh, head stay here uh, on, the, uh, on the Schaefer system. So you can raise up one sail and the other. Or some people you can, will sometimes carry twin head soles up there yep. and then go wing and wing and maybe even forget the main going in the trade winds in the South Pacific. We have these little clips down here. This. Uh, oh, these little clips? Yeah. Those are, those are just catches. Those are safety catches for, the, uh, for these lines right here. Oh, I see. And this here. will pop out. And you see this one's hooked on this side? Yep. It just grabs that. But nice deck work. Good deep bulwarks here. Nice, nice high. Uh, oh, yeah. Stanchions on the lifelines. Yep. Lifelines are all brand new too. They've all been replaced on the boat. We have here one of our favorite old pals, Mr. Spinnaker Pole. See this this piece of aluminum here that's cast into it? Yep. That has actually a car way up at the top there. See the black car? Yep. Dark gray, just above the pole. That's gonna slide down. So we can unhook it down here lower. We pull up on this line, pop it off and then walk this pole forward, like so, and the after end will slide down that track. He's also got some steps here that will take you up to heaven. At least get you up to the first set of spreaders. What are these two up here with these two little uh, plugged off things? We'll take a look when we go below. I can't quite identify those at this point. We have a, a big Viking life raft, and the capacity on that is six-person life raft, and it looks like it got a water-activated uh, release for it. Nice wind vents. Uh, little simple to raid boxes. Plenty of ventilation below these two hatches in the main cabin here and the one forward. Let's take a look aft. Now, this is where we pick up a couple extra feet on the boat. And when you look over the stern, you'll see what they call a sugar scoop. And it's just a little scoop back there that allows you to get on and off the boat with your dinghy or swimming, but also gives you another two feet or so of waterline length as well. 
And waterline length, we know, is the king, right? It is king. Very much so. And why is that? A boat that displaces water to move through the water as opposed to a outboard that skims across the top, their speed is determined by the length of the water line. And Back here we've got a couple of nice big lockers with, oh, there we go, uh, safety man overboard gear uh, stowed away on this side and propane tanks on the other side. Nicely gasketed, we like that. So there's two spares and one one operating one right now. See, they're all bolted down here. Oh yeah. And uh, that right down there on each side. We have a fold down ladder, of course, on the transom. And uh, that's this piece right here. And that'll drop right down and get your swimmers on board or the man overboard on board. Looks like a second mast. We do, this is a catch. And uh, she's got a nice big after cabin. She's a heavy boat, she's 29,000 pounds and uh, has about 12,000 pounds of ballast to keep her upright. Nice Selden boom and Selden spars here, all anodized aluminum. And they obviously like these tracks on every, every mast they make. This is not gonna take a spinnaker pole on this track or anything, but it's just this groove is cut in here to anything you might want to uh, attached to your mizzen. So, what do you think? Would you like to take a look below in this? I would, yeah. I let's think go. you're going to think it's fine and pretty cozy. Hey, Randy, come on down, pal. All right. Come on down, check this out. Oh, yeah. Look, we finally found a boat that left their cushions in for the winter. <laughs> and I just slid this settee out a little bit. Uh, you can take these back cushions down and have a really nice wide sea berth. I just wanted a little more comfortable settee right now. But I just want to talk for just a quick second about uh, the designer, Ted Brewer. Uh, Ted was born in uh, uh, 1933, and um, he uh, grew up in, in, um, outside of, uh, oh, I think it was Hamilton, Ontario, and uh, eventually went off to the Army, joined the Army for a while, and then came back, and he went to work for George Cuthbertson at CNC, and then eventually uh, went and took himself to school uh, by mail order, the West Lawn School of Yacht Design. After that, he decided to uh, move to Connecticut about 1960, and he went to work for A.E. Bill Luters. Uh, Bill Luters Yacht Yard, uh, and they were designing 5.5 meter boats um, for racing. He also helped Luters uh, uh, redesign Weatherly, who went back after losing one America's Cup trials, went back the following season and won uh, the whole thing. He also did all the drawings for American Eagle, another 12 meter back then that Luders designed. In about 1967, uh, Ted Brewer moved to Brooklyn, Maine and uh, got together with a guy named Bob Wallstrom and the two of them had a design operation there. And they designed about 100, 100 custom boats. Ted and his wife moved out to Washington State uh, and then to British Columbia and where he's lived out his final days. He left behind him three different books that he has written himself. They're, they're great books to read and uh, uh, is, is probably most well known is just titled simply Understanding Boat Design. What you see is what you get. A really nice main saloon. We're on a 13 and a half foot beam I think on this boat and that's about the same size as your boat I think Randy isn't it? It is yeah. And uh, so we've got a nice big L-shaped settee on the port side and this pull-out settee on the starboard. Uh, there's a little desk arrangement here that can pop down. We've got one, two, three opening hatches in here for different air. There are also one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight beautiful stainless uh, hatches that open up. You can open these hatches and there's a nice little metal hatch that comes down here and you just slip it in the eye and holds it very solidly in place. We had a couple holes up on deck we can't quite figure out. They've been covered over. And here, that, here are the sections to them right now. And I think Randy picked it up at one point. It's probably part of the heating system that was bolted on here. You can see the shadow of it. And I think they might have had a furnace here of some sort. Uh, and it's been removed. Gourmet kitchen, galley, whatever you want to call it. It's enormous and deep. Uh, we have a safety bar right here. It's going to keep you from banging into the three burner stove. Nice little hatch here on a hinge and look at the size of that one. Now you would like that one wouldn't you because there's enough room to put partitions in there. Two big sinks. We like these don't we? And there's a little little vent right here 
and I'm gonna bet you dimes of dollars this is a vent for your fresh water tank. Microwave in the corner, I love microwaves now, and you're gonna to have to pan into here to take a look at the size of the refrigeration unit here. This is by far the biggest. Now, you got into one of these on one of the other boats we looked, and you could probably get into this one if you laid down. <laughs> but it's just giant size. And of course, food storage back here. Oh, <laughs> there's our pal. Your electrical panel is all controlled by your master um, switches right here underneath the companionway. Again, we're not always crazy about having those switches there. Why they keep doing it, I don't know. Now, the nav station, this is for your old-time destroyer Navy captain, right? Lots of drawer storage underneath, and it just slides right out. That's really handsome, hmm? I would almost call that uh, noteworthy as chart table storage, wouldn't you? Yeah. So we'll give them a point or two on that. Up on deck, you've got a Ray Marine <laughs> radar, and down here, we've got a Garmin uh, series. So I'm not certain how these are linked together. Single sideband system set up here, uh, radio, and then down here, we have another Garmin set of uh, instruments. There we go. And there's your mapping device with your GPS and so forth. Now, we've got a VHF right here handy. Uh, you don't need it right down and facing the, the navigation, but you can just reach up and talk here. Plus, somebody up in the cockpit can reach inside. It's got the uh, AIS on it and it's uh, in the stress and so forth. So, and what is AIS? Uh, that's the automatic identification system so that other boats can read you in the fog miles and miles away. So, what do you say we head uh, into the... After state room. Oh, we have a step down this time. We have a step down. Oh, now with the other one, we didn't have the step down. Yeah, that makes a big and, difference. And uh, so I'm still not full, full height here. There we go. Nice big chart table storage here. This, we're gonna give them good points for this. Here's a set of batteries, um, six volt that are probably in series. Look at the, the 12 volt panel, the 110 volt panel. Off to my right here, I do the limbo around and we're gonna open this up and get be prepared to be dazzled. Wow, look at that. Woo. So what am I looking at here? You have a, 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 a relatively new Yanmar diesel here that has 110 horsepower. It's only got 100 hours on it. Looks like a fuel polishing system here with the double ray cores. It probably is. It's a system that rotates your fuel through a series of ray core filters, then pours it back into the tank and takes any uh, moisture and dirt out of your fuel s tanks before you end up sucking it up and putting it through the engine. And then you've got your oil filters, and then you've also got to remember to clean the air filter in the diesel, which a lot of people don't. But if you look way over the other side, uh, trust me, you'll be able to drop down through that other locker, yep. uh, if needed to, and access all that other engine, including the diesel oh, we've generator. Got, we've got air conditioning on here. Uh, I think there's air conditioning reverse cycle, uh, heating and air conditioning on board, yes. Yep. Looks like a generator. And it's a generator. Do you know what it is? Northern Lights generator. A charge controller. Is there solar? Yeah, there is solar. Yeah, there's a solar panel on the uh, on the transom. Oh, did you look down at the bilge? Yeah, why don't we... It's how what, deep the me. sump is. Oh, wow. That is deep. Yep. Yeah. You know, I don't think we mentioned it, but this is a centerboard boat. This gets a little tighter as you get through the computer. It does get a little bit tighter, but you got to step up here. But it really is massive, huh? You can have the whole family in here, the kids and the grandchildren, and everybody come visit. Are we going to see how big it is? I, I will get the measuring stick. Now, <clears throat> one thing about this, a bunk this size, you can sleep any direction you want to. Uh, so you've got a lot of variation. Now, the other thing that's kind of nice here, they have a telltale compass. Uh, do you know what that is? Uh, I do. You well. Know, you know why I do? I don't know. How gonna, do you know that? i got a very generous Christmas gift. From, oh. from a certain YouTube star. Oh my gosh, what a lucky guy. Well, in case somebody out there didn't get one of these, uh, and they are about as, as rare as hound's teeth. <sighs> this is for the captain can lie in his bunk and he look up at this and he'll know which way the boat is being steered. And it's all gimbal, so no matter how the boat is, is uh, you know, floating in the water, it'll always float flat. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six opening stainless beautiful ports with their little hooks above them and a nice hatch above for more air. Now wait do you take a look at this. Uh, again put away a little bit for the winter, some storage in there in the shower stall and seat uh, in the shower stall 
and a little bit of a tublet there. I think you could flip up that board that the, those uh, items are sitting on, yep. and you will have a little bathtub. And I'm just going to go in here and give you the Captain Q. Does it have a shower? Check out what? Does it have a shower? Yeah, of course it has a shower. You're going to shower right here in, yeah. in the basin here. Gotcha. Uh, and here's your shower head right here. Uh, there's something, I don't know what that is right there. There's a light there. It looks like it's broken, so we want to fix that little thing. Just to give you a little uh, show and tell of the uh, uh, water intakes probably for the main engine and for the generator. Uh, and also, if you can bend around just a little bit, you'll see the shaft oh, yeah. stuffing box. That's nicely accessible. Very accessible. You know what's really nice here? It's really simple. Some labels on the plumbing. We have more access to your engine. Ooh. How do you like that? And this is one of the best things about the boat, too. Having this companionway that leads you right up to the wheel. You're missing a step right above this. That was an issue with the other boat, but they've obviously taken care of it with a compression post and compression bulkhead right here. You want some Vaseline? We have a lot of boat here, don't we? A lot of boat. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, come on in. I wasn't that busy. <laughs> Now, we finally found the room with the biggest mirror. This is really a big mirror. But we have a single door head that's nice to see. I don't know what's going on here. You see different little holes in the boat and things that need to be maintained or, or dressed up. I think the boat's been pretty well used. Uh, your extra TP storage. You got a shower, nice big shower grate here with a little sump down there in the plith. This is a nice size. And then we're gonna go forward. Uh, to our V-berth area with a filler piece. Look at the size that, of, the, that, of that bunk, and that's just a single. Nice hatch above me, one stainless opening port here, and then the other one is in the head. Those are the two matching ports. Really good headroom for a V-berth. Yeah, exactly. I mean, what do we have here? Like 6'3", uh, six, 6'4". We just don't know how well you might fit in that bunk. I'll tell you right now, I'm gonna fit really well, and I'm gonna prove it to you in a nanosecond. Here we go. I'm gonna sit here and just swing over, and I think Ted, is, was not a small man himself. Did he, did he give and, you a handle to grab onto? Uh, no. You have to use your ab. <laughs> yeah, I have no abs. I can't, <laughs> I can't move. Man, I really can't move. It's like a Venus fly bed. Uh, I'm going to lean here for, for a while. Why don't you go away? <laughs> Thanks, Randy. Right, Bye. from home and live on a boat? Sure. Well, I just saw one that you could do that beautifully. A Brewer 44, designed by Ted Brewer and built in 1988. This boat's got a, some mileage on her, uh, so much mileage that they decided to put a new engine in it. Great after cabin. I like the big cockpit with dual companionways so you can come up or go down the way you want to for privacy. Uh, the after head was like being at home with a seat in the shower and a little bit of a tub there to work with. Uh, the boat needs a little spicing up here and there, but very little. Where do you want to go with it? Anywhere you want to. Shoal draft, center border. Let's give it a 10 because she floats. All right. Let's give it another 15 because Ooh. you can live on this boat, okay? Yeah. So sell the house, buy the boat, 25 points. I think there were some bonuses involved here. Oh, there were some bonuses. Electrical panel, maybe, or the Electrical other? panel was beautiful. It was tucked away in the companion way. Yeah. I'm going to give them three for that, and I'm going to give them another three for the big chart table. Nice electronic setup, upper station and lower nav station. Let's give her a 30. You're going to move on this boat. 30 points for, for the Brewer 44. Uh, anybody that finds this boat and moves on to this boat or just goes sailing for a really long time is going to have a great time. And, oh, by the way, yeah. uh, the V-berth was a little tricky, but that had to do with <laughs> merging fabrics. I told you not to wear a vel velvet pants. I know. Thanks so much, guys. See you in the next episode. If you like what you see, please hit the subscribe button. And if you want to be notified when the next one comes out, please hit the alert bell. And that's not desperate at all. Randy, how would I ever find out what's coming up next? Uh, you can follow us on Instagram here yeah. or Facebook here. We'll have little previews of what's coming up on our next episodes a little bit early. That's pretty cool. Previews. You all join me. I'm going to Instagram right now, and I'm going to find out what's coming up next week. Thank you very much.
You know, Instagram's not a place. <laughs>